And our Consul Peroni also has a very powerful position because he gets to speak last to give us the unique <laughs> Italian position. Thank you, David. It's great to be here in Orange County. I've, uh, I've come here a few times and it's, uh, it's a really great part of the nation and I'm really grateful. Thank you for inviting us. That's very really lovely. And also thank you for doing international programs. I uh, heard it before, the uh, student. And it's very exciting that uh, young people are interested in international affairs. That's great. So it's, uh, it's, it's very interesting also for us to share our views with you. Um, what to say about this crisis? I agree with Wolfgang that uh, the title is a bit exaggerated. Maybe the economic collapse. Um, uh, I, I don't know. It's, uh, this is this crisis is this crisis is very uh, unique. It's a crisis that happens in the midst of a global crisis. It's a European crisis in the sense that uh, somehow the markets have targeted the single European countries. But it's, um, it's a crisis uh, mostly of confidence, more than a crisis on that. Uh, if you think about it, uh, the, the nations that have been struck by this crisis most are nations that were doing fine from the point of view of that. You take uh, Portugal, you take Spain, they, were, uh, they had a, ratio, a, GDP, a debt versus GDP ratio which was very favorable. And nonetheless, they were they were struck by the debt. If you take the overall the average uh, European data for the uh, GDP versus ratio versus uh, uh, debt ratio, well, that's uh, lower than the U.S. So I guess that the U.S. has a similar and equally important uh, problem when we talk about debt in Europe. Uh, it's in, in terms of, in, in terms, in arithmetical terms, it's even, it's even uh, a more important one. So we, I think that we should keep things uh, in perspective. Um, it's also very important to notice that uh, this crisis, it's a crisis of confidence, as I was saying, uh, because the markets uh, uh, did not at some point um, trust the ability of the European to respond to the crisis. And actually, the Europeans have managed to do quite a bit in the past few months. Uh, we had the fiscal pact signed. Uh, it's a fiscal pact that is very strong and it imposes a very strong uh, budget discipline on its members. Um, and uh, at the same time, it uh, requires every single country to um, reduce the burden of its debt gradually, of course. Then we had, as you said at the beginning, the European Central Bank inject uh, important uh, uh, amounts of liquidity into the system to help, to help the European nations uh, face, deal with, uh, with uh, with the budgetary problem somehow, and it was done uh, in a peculiar way. There was this, uh, this uh, uh, loan that was given to banks, and then the banks bought uh, bonds, basically. This is pretty much what the effect does in, uh, in, in the US. So that was done as well. And then the most important part, I think, was the commitment by virtually all European countries especially the weakest one, to uh, structural reforms. Quite a bit has been done, uh, Greece, Italy, Spain, and uh, also other, other countries that were particularly struck by this economic crisis in terms of structurally reforming their economies and trying to uh, improve the productivity of their, of, of their system. Uh, also taking, adopting measures that were very very tough and imposed a very uh, strong sacrifice on its citizens. And the other thing that I find particularly meaningful was that, uh, yes, there have been um, episodes of unrest, which is normal in democratic countries, but all in all, I think that uh, the people in our countries demonstrated to really understand the extent of the problem, to really uh, understand what was required 
of them to accept somehow the, the sacrifices that each one of them had to uh, had to uh, to go through in order to solve this situation. And that's a very powerful element because it allows each country to do whatever is necessary to address issues that uh, maybe lingered for a long time, but they needed to be addressed. And they were addressed in a very powerful way. Now, is everything solved now? Of course not. Uh, today's uh, Greek uh, deal was very positive, uh, but we still have, uh, you know, a way to go. Of course, uh, Europe is different from the U.S. in that we have uh, no, um, we have single member states that are sovereign in their fiscal policies and the monetary policy. Is, is, we have a single uh, central bank, but there, there, there are still challenges uh, even there. So we need to perfect our union in the way that we need to strengthen our monetary policy. The ECB is, is showing a tremendous, terrific leadership that is really helping us to, uh, to get past this, time, this moment and to really transform this crisis into an opportunity. We really need to also harmonize our fiscal policies because we have to have a central European entity that selectively, that organizes priorities, that is able to intervene wherever is needed. And so only if we are able to do that, and we are going to do that because everyone agrees with that, we will be able to really transform this, this moment into an opportunity. Great, thank you. Thank you very much. Of course, I'm sure most of you are aware that the current uh, president of the European Central Bank is an Italian, Mario Draghi. Uh, in Europe, we sometimes say it's the, the era of the Super Marios because also the new uh, Italian Prime Minister, former European Commissioner, Mario Monti. I think